Your eye doctor has advised you or someone you know for an injection in the eye. And you're scared, naturally so. And you want to know more. Well, you've come to the right place to get all your answers sorted. Although it may sound a bit scary at first, this is a rather painless eye procedure. And to your surprise, it is one of the most commonly performed eye procedures all across the globe. And in this simple eye procedure, we land up preserving sight for millions and lakhs of people across the globe. Hi everybody, I am Dr. Harshit Vaidya, a vitro retina surgeon based out of Mumbai at Dr. Vaidya Eye Hospital. And in this video, we will cover all there is to know about the injection in the eye. So when an injection is suggested for your retinal eye disease, what this essentially means, it is an intravitreal injection. Basically, this is an injection which is the drug in which the drug is injected inside the vitreous humor of the eye, hence the name intravitreal injection. These injections are ideally given in an operation theater in a sterile environment to ensure all the precautions are maintained. This procedure when given by experts is a rather painless procedure which gets done in about 5 minutes. After the procedure, the eye is preferably patched with an eye pad for about 3 to 5 hours, following which topical antibiotic eye drops are prescribed for about a week. So the natural question is, when are these injections indicated or when do we use these injections in the eye? The most common indication or the most common use for this drug is in a disease called as diabetic retinopathy or more precisely diabetic macular edema. In this disease, basically there is a swelling in the eye because of diabetes affecting the blood vessels. The second most common disease is called as choroidal neovascular membrane. In this disease, basically there is a new vessel that is formed underneath the retina. And this causes a swelling or accumulation of fluid inside the eye, thereby causing a drop in vision. The third common indication is called as retinal vein occlusions. Basically, in this, the retinal vessel or a vein is occluded. This causes a swelling inside the eye. The fourth common indication is infection in the eye, commonly called as endophthalmitis. This is a rather serious eye condition in which number of injections may be needed and at times even surgeries. There are three types of drugs that are injected into the eye. Number one, anti-VEGF, also called as anti-vascular endothelial growth factor. Number two, steroids. And number three, antibiotics. So these anti-VEGF, also called as the anti-vascular endothelial growth factor, are drugs which act or block the VEGF in the eye, also called as the vascular endothelial growth factor. What these VEGF do is basically cause the swelling inside the eye as well as the formation of new vessels. So these drugs counteract these VEGF molecules and help reduce the swelling as well as helping in the vision. Number two, the steroids basically reduce or subside the entire inflammatory cascade in the eye. And three, antibiotics, which we all know from the general body that we use the antibiotics, they reduce or subside the infection or the germs inside the body. In today's video, we'll be focusing mainly on the anti-VGF drugs. We have three options. Number one, Bevacizumab, also called as Avastin. Number two, Ranibizumab, also called as Accentrix or Lucentis. And number three, Ilia, also called as Aflibercept. In the last one year, we have a new drug which is introduced in India, also called as Brolicizumab or Pagenex. These are indicated under certain conditions. And in the US, a recently approved drug called as Farisimab has been approved, but in India, it is yet to be launched. In the forthcoming years, we have a lot of drugs which are under trial and will be available to our patients over these years. So patients often ask, which is the best drug for us? Well, when we compare the efficacy of the drugs, Ilia is a better drug compared to Ranibizumab and Avastin. But for all practical purposes, there isn't much of a difference between the three drugs when we use them in our clinical practice. In certain conditions, however, like polyporeal choroidal vasculopathy or recurrent macular edema, Ilia has shown to have a superior effect. The major difference between Avastin and other molecules is that Avastin is a multi-drug or multi-dose vial. What this basically means is this drug is given to number of patients to reduce the cost of the injection for the patient. This has a theoretical risk of infection, 
but when given by retina experts in a controlled and an aseptic environment, these chances are practically zero. Additionally, Ilia and Accentrix are FDA approved drugs which are specifically manufactured for the eye. However, Avastin is an anti-cancer drug which is not yet FDA approved. However, Avastin is used as an off-label drug to reduce the cost of the injections for the patients. One important question which patients often ask us is how many injections will we need? Will one injection suffice? Well, anti-VGF drug acts inside the eye or has a half-life of about 4 to 6 weeks. What this means is that the drug actively works in the eye for about 4 to 6 weeks, following which the effect of the drug wanes. This means that you may need more than one injection in the initial phase of the disease, but it is important that the disease is actively treated in the initial phase because in the later stages, not only does the drug wane off, but the effect of the drug also is lesser over a period of time. The most important reason for administering these drugs is to halt the progression of the disease as well as maintain the vision at which it presented. If the disease continues to progress over time without administering these drugs, there is a risk of permanent visual loss and after which even n number of drugs do not cause the kind of recovery we would expect as it would in the initial phase. Hence, it is important to maintain a regular follow-up with your retina specialist. Missing an injection in the initial phase, we risk having poorer outcomes and also have a risk of needing multiple injections later on in the disease. When the retina specialist advises an injection, it is imperative that we take the injection at the earliest possible time. This ensures that the active disease is treated because once the disease in the eye in the retina becomes permanent, no number of injections or surgeries can salvage the vision and hence the need for regular and continuous monitoring is needed. There are three main criteria that your doctor monitors in every visit. Number one, vision. He wants to know and he checks your vision. Has it improved? Has it worsened? Or is it stable? Number two, clinical signs. We need to know if the disease inside the eye has worsened or progressed. The doctor will ask you questions about your symptoms. Does the blurriness worsen? Has it improved? Has the wavy lines become better? And number three, serial OCTs, also known as optical coherence tomography. This tool helps us objectively monitor the disease. The patients are then asked for a monthly follow-up with the doctor to monitor these three parameters and keep the disease under check. Intravitreal injections are one of the most safest procedures to be undertaken. But however, like any other procedure or any other treatment, there is a theoretical risk of infection in the eye. However, maintaining strict protocols and maintaining asepsis helps us reduce that probability to almost zero. In some cases, you can have glaucoma, cataract or even bleeding. But this occurs when there is an incorrect technique or a patient violently moves during this procedure. When a patient has had a history of stroke or has undergone a cardiac surgery or is pregnant, we suggest the patient to undergo a consultation with this physician because the drug may not be safe according to the physician's clearance. The management of the eye problem does not end with the injection. Patients have certain responsibilities that they need to fulfill to get a better result of these injections. Number one, maintaining strict systemic control. What this means is the patients with diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol need to have all of these parameters under check. The reason is these diseases have a direct impact on the retina. Then number of injections will reduce. So unless these conditions are under control, our efforts of giving these injections go in vain. Hence, it is essential that we have good physician care along with these eye injections. The second is to go for regular checkups as advised by your retina specialist. As soon as you notice a change in your symptom, a change or a drop in vision, consult the retina specialist as soon as possible. The reason to maintain or do this simple advice is to ensure that we do not miss an advanced stage of a disease and halt it right in time. Because once the injection or the treatment is delayed, we risk losing the vision permanently and hence the recovery of the same. Third, whenever an injection is advised, it is recommended that we take the injection as soon as possible. 
As explained earlier, we risk losing the vision permanently. The drug acts best in the initial phase of the disease. We advise you discuss in detail all the possible injections with your retina specialist. The essential part here is not to delay the injection. So now that we've discussed all there is to know about the injections in the eye, there are few key takeaways. Number one, discuss in detail about all the options of injections in the eye. Number two, let cost not be the barrier for treatment. And number three, as soon as the problem is detected, please start the treatment as soon as possible. Thank you.